One of, if not the worst piece of advice I see get passed around as if it were gospel is that you need stacked joints. I mainly see this brought up for the bottom position of a bench press, so that is what I will demonstrate with, but the same logic really applies to any lift in general. This piece of advice is just as ridiculous as saying your knees cannot pass over your toes during your squat. Honestly, I think it just came up because people chose an arbitrary, symmetrical position in the side that must be optimal, but it's ridiculous to think that would necessarily be the case. The first argument I often hear about it is that if you're not in that position, you're not efficiently transferring force. Somebody saying that is a dead giveaway that they wouldn't even pass Physics 101. This would only be the case if you were literally pressing outwards like this. If you make your hands move in a straight line up and down, force is being directly transferred into the bar as efficiently as possible. If you're still not convinced, let's apply this logic to another lift, the squat. If the most efficient way to transfer the force was to have our body segment be directly parallel with the line of action, why do the vast majority of people squat more weight with a low bar squat? If the logic for stack joint positions held true, the most efficient way to squat would be with as vertical a torso as possible, a high bar squat with a ton of forward knee travel. Some people are going to be stronger that way, but the majority aren't. The reason is, and this applies to the bench too, we're transferring the force to a different part of the body. In the squat, we're transferring some load from the quads to the hip extensors. In the bench, we're transferring load from the triceps to the pecs, assuming we're going with a wider grip position. The other argument I hear is that you're extending the moment arm if you do this and it's going to be less efficient. In this case, this tells me they won't be able to pass biomechanics 101. When we're changing the joint angles and moment arm lengths here, it's a zero sum game. Let's use the example of taking a grip width position wider than what would give us a stack joint position at the bottom. The length of the shoulder flexion moment arm is simply going to be equal to our grip width. So yes, we are increasing the length of the moment arm for shoulder flexion, but at the same time we're shortening the one for elbow extension. If we draw a straight line through our humerus here, the moment arm for tricep extension is going to be the distance between that line and our hand. If we use the stack joint position, we're going to increase the length of the moment arm versus using a wider grip. Like I said before, we're transferring load from one part of the body to another. So there's nothing inherently more efficient with one position versus the other. All it comes down to is individual leverages. So you still might argue, well, maybe the stack joint position is the most efficient for the majority of people. If this were the case, we would see the majority of elite lifters use this position, but we see the opposite in fact. I made a video on grip width of lifters at the most recent world championships. 81% of male open lifters use a grip width within one finger width of the maximum legal grip. Also, looking at the raw men's world records in the IPF, only one of them was done with a stack joint position at the bottom of the bench. Looking at the strongest raw bencher in the world, Julius Maddox, you can see even at the bottom position, he does not have stacked joints. They're actually in a concave position. So essentially, the vast majority of elite lifters do not follow the stack joint advice. If it were really optimal, this obviously would not be the case. The other argument I hear is that it's more optimal for hypertrophy. This really isn't the case and it's going to depend what your goals really are. Like I said, we're essentially just trading stress from one part of the body to the other, from the triceps to the pecs or vice versa. So the joint position that is best for you is the one that targets the muscles you want to hit in particular. This may be a stack joint position which is a relatively even distribution between pecs and triceps, but it's not necessarily the case at all. And now, grip width will influence the range of motion in terms of joint angle. The thing is, when you shorten the range of motion in terms of joint angle, at the same time you're lengthening the moment arm. So, any losses of range of motion are going to be outweighed by the extra mechanical tension generated from the longer moment arm. It's essentially all going to even out in the end. So, to summarize the key points of the video, 1. There's nothing inherent about the stack joint position that necessarily makes it the most efficient position to press from. The strongest position for you is just going to have to be found through trial and error. Stack joints aren't necessarily beneficial for hypertrophy either. That's going to depend on the muscle you want to target. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, comment, share the video. It will help me grow the channel. If there are any other topics you want me to cover, please comment them below. And once again, thanks for watching.